says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And in just a few moments, you'll be hearing a sermon by my father on a really important subject entitled, The Fear of God. He could have actually called this the lack of fear of God because in our present day, unfortunately, we often meet people who demonstrate no fear of God uh, in their lives. You know, sadly, many of our churches today have also chosen to ignore the teaching of the fear of God. They've tried to make God into our buddy who accepts us just as we are, regardless of what we do or how we live our lives. And if the purpose of the church is just to make people comfortable on the road to hell, then we're really missing our mission in the churches. This sermon deals with the fear of God. It's not a sermon that's designed to make people uh, feel more comfortable, but it's a sermon that's designed to teach us the truth and teach us the beginning of wisdom. There will be no fear of God until we understand who God is, and then we will have no problem fearing God. I hope this sermon will touch your heart. It's a sermon that's not designed, as I said, to make people comfortable, but it's a, a sermon designed to preach the truth. And now here's my father, Dr. J. Harold Smith. Since this is a day that our God has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. The subject of our message today is the fear of God. And I just wonder, my dear friends, if you know where that scripture is found in the Word of God. Over in Romans chapter 3 and verse 18, the Bible declares, For there is no fear of God before their eyes. I believe this is a major sin of this day. I'm confident as I travel around over the world, I am confident that not only in America, but all over the universe, men have lost their fear of God. I believe there are several reasons why that has happened. And I hope that I can point some of those out to you in this message. And if there is no fear of God in your heart and before your eyes, I trust that by the time I finish this message, every lost sinner, every backslider, and every true child of God will have a greater fear before your eyes of God than you have ever had in all of your life. I realize that we live in a day when many preachers are preaching nothing but the love of God. But the Bible talks about the wrath of God. The Bible talks about the fury of God. The Bible talks about the anger of God. The Bible talks about the judgment of God. And I do believe with all of my heart, if ever there is an hour in our history, I believe it's now when we need to get the fear of God before our eyes. We have brought up a generation of young people that have no idea that God is the majestic God that he is, that he's the almighty, that he is the powerful one, that he is the merciful one, that he is the one that has no beginning. He is the alpha. He is the one that has no ending. He is the omega. And when I stop to think about that, and I know that people do not know him and, are not, and have no love in their heart for him and no fear of God before their eyes, I say, oh Lord, help me in this message to all of those that may be listening and all those that may be looking into my face to get a fear of God in your heart that you have never known. When God said to Moses, I want you to go back to Egypt where you're wanted for murder and I want you to go back into that country and face Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. There was no fear of God in the eyes of Pharaoh. And when Moses and Aaron appeared in his court and said, God, the almighty God, the great I am, says, let my people go. They said, we know the frog-faced God of Egypt. We know the beetle-faced God of Egypt. But who is this Jehovah that we should obey your voice or his voice? and let the people of Israel go. They have been our slaves for many, many years. And what will we do without all of these millions of slaves that we have? And there was no fear of God in the eyes of Pharaoh. And then Moses lifted that, uh, that rod that God had given him, 
and commanded it, and the water, all of the water of the Nile, all of the water in their basins, all of the waters in their cisterns turned into blood. And still, that did not cause the fear of God to come into the eyes of Pharaoh. And then when God brought on the plague of frogs, that did, still did not bring the fear in the eyes. But when God said to Moses, you tell Pharaoh that after I've sent all of these plagues, the lice, the lightning, the thunder, the hail, the locusts, after I've sent all of these plagues upon you, and still you harden your heart and shift your neck, and there is no fear of God before your eyes, I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to destroy the firstborn in every home. And your son, that is the heir to the throne of Egypt, he's going to die unless there is blood placed upon the upper lintel of the doorpost and upon each side of the doorpost. I'm going to bring death to every person, Jew, Gentile, Egyptian, Hebrew, Israelite. It doesn't make any difference. I'm going to bring judgment. I'm going to bring death upon every one of you that does not have the blood of this lamb that is without spot and without blemish upon the doorpost and on the upper lintel. And still there was no fear in the eyes and no respect in the heart of Pharaoh for God Almighty. Although he had seen all of these many plagues that came upon Egypt. And the word of God says that Moses said, when he said, do not let me see your face once more in my court. Because if I see your face, you're going to die. I'm going to kill you if you come back into my court. And Moses said, you shall not behold my face anymore, nor that of Aaron. And when he stepped out, they, the Israelites prepared as God had commanded a little lamb without spot and without blemish. And they kept that little lamb up for 14 days and then they killed it, catching the blood in a beaker. And taking a piece of hyssop, they spread that blood on the two side posts and on the upper lintel. And that night at midnight, the death angel passed through the land of Egypt. And God said, wherever you fail to find the blood then you bring the judgment of God upon that home. And the firstborn in that household died. In many households, the father died. In that many households in Egypt, the eldest son died. And I want to tell you something. The fear of God fell upon Egypt. The fear of God fell upon Pharaoh. And they cried out, get out of our land. Get out of our land. But no sooner than Moses had led the people out to the Red Sea... Pharaoh again failed to have the fear of God in his eyes. And the Bible declares that when they followed him, Pharaoh and his choice soldiers in their chariots followed him out to the Red Sea. God said, Moses, be still and I'll show you what I can do. Be still and see the salvation of the Lord. And the Bible declares that God sent down an east wind and separated the waters of the Red Sea. And Moses and every single Israelite, and the Bible says not a hoof was left behind, passed over the Red Sea. And Pharaoh, when he saw all of the children of Israel going in that direction, Moses said to God, God, the time is now. And the Pharaoh marched in, and as he marched into that Red Sea, God let all of those invisible dams collapse, and all of those tons of water fell in upon Pharaoh, upon his soldiers, upon his chariots, upon his horses, and crushed them all to death. Yes, some will not have the fear of God in their eyes until, until the judgment of God falls upon them. And then sad to say, it is too late. God has commanded us. He has commanded every man everywhere to repent. He says that it's not the will of God that any man should perish, but that all men should come to repentance. And unless you repent of your sins, unless I repent of my sins, unless the president repents of his sins, unless the Congress repents of their sins, and if the governor of our state does not repent of his sins, and if you do not repent of your sins, God says you shall perish. But it's not the will of God that any should perish. But it's the will of God that all men everywhere should come to repentance. And if you will come to repentance, then you will find that that blood that was shed by the Lamb of God, the Lamb that was perfect, absolutely perfect, not just for 14 days, but the lamb that was perfect 
from eternity to eternity. Not one sin can ever be found or discovered in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is indeed God Almighty. And the Bible declares that unless that blood is applied by faith to your heart, to your wicked heart, to your sinful heart, unless that blood is applied to your heart, you shall perish. You may be the richest man listening and looking into my face right now. You may be the most cultured, refined lady that's looking in my face right now. And you may have a church, but you don't have Christ. You may have religion, but you don't have the Redeemer. You may have the waters of baptism, but you don't have the blood. That means you're a L-O-S-T, lost. And what a terrible thing it is to be lost. And because there is no fear of God before your eyes, and because there is no respect in your heart for the almighty eternal God that gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever will may come, and he will in no wise cast out. God says, let the drunkard come. Let the dope addict come. Let the uh, lesbian come. Let the homosexual come. Let the wicked, all men, the liar, the thief, the murderer, the mass murderer. I'll never forget. When I saw on television one night the face of a young man, a handsome young man, and the news reporter reported, this is Jeffrey Dahmer. I'd never heard that name before, neither had you. And it said he has been arrested for killing at least 18 young men. He would entice these young men by offering them beer, by offering them a perverted sex because he was a homosexual, and he would invite them into his apartment, and then he would butcher them. He would kill them with a butcher knife and then rip open their chest, and while their heart was pumping blood, warm with that blood, he would eat that heart. He was not only a mass murderer, a homosexual, but he was a modern-day cannibal, a eater of human flesh. And if that man, before he was murdered a few months ago, yonder in that prison where he was sentenced, if he had called upon God and asked God to forgive him, and if he'd have repented of those sins, and if he'd have the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ applied not to the doorpost, not to the upper lintel of their home, but the heart, applied to the heart, when God would see the blood, the Bible says he would pass over us. So when God on that night in Egypt failed to see the blood, the precious blood of the, that lamb that was put upon the doorpost, death entered into that house. And as sure as my name is J. Harold Smith, and as sure as I'm looking into your face right now, I want to tell you, if you fail to get the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, God's Son, on your heart. And if you fail to get the fear of God before your eyes, and if you fail to realize that He is the Almighty, the eternal, everlasting Father, and that beside Him there is no other God, if you fail to realize that and to come to that knowledge, you're going to die, and without the blood upon your heart, you're going to go to hell. And the Bible declares that when the great white throne judgment is set, death and hell shall give up the dead that are in them, and they shall stand before God and to be judged for their sins and be cast them alive into the lake of, of fire, where the smoke of their torment shall ascend up before the Father forever and ever and ever. If you look in the Bible, you'll find over in the book of Revelation that the Bible talks about, and the mighty angel appeared, talking about the fear of of the Lord. It just seems to me today that we have absolutely lost all fear of God before our eyes. I cannot understand why a man that says he loves God has a fear of God in his heart will pass up his church on the Lord's Day and go to the golf course. I cannot understand that. I cannot understand how some of you that claim to love God and be so dedicated to God can take off to the beach every weekend and never darken the door of the house of God, and never show him any respect and fish all the weekend. My friends, I cannot understand how that some of you claim that you have the fear of God in your heart, and yet you go to church on Sunday and never take your tithe, you never go there to worship, 
You go there to criticize, to find fault. I cannot understand that. But I believe with all of my heart that if we could have a revival that would bring the fear of God before the eyes of Americans, I believe that things would change in our nation. We would not have the liquor stores on every, every corner. We don't have the beer joints, the honky-tonks. We would not have the roadhouses. We would not have all of the divorces that we face today. We would not have all of the sin. We would not have the mass murderers that we have today. I want to ask you, is the fear of God before your eyes? If the fear of God was before your eyes, then you would have a greater respect for your family you would never abuse your wife. You would never abuse your little children. I want to tell you, if the fear of God was before your eyes, you would never again have somebody sign a note with you and then skip out on the note or dodge your doctor bill. You would pay your bills. You'd be honest. You'd be a man that would be respected in the community. The Word of God tells us that this is a pathetic crowd. What a pathetic crowd this is. No one, not one, my friends, would not a person listening and looking to my face would put your foot out and trip a blind man and let him fall to the ground. And yet I tell you, we are preachers. They are blind leaders of the blind. And they are telling you that you don't have to really repent. They are telling you that you don't have to really believe in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. They tell you that you can operate under the covenant of God and keep the commandments of God and still go to heaven. That's a lie. I want to tell you the only way that you'll ever get to heaven is by the way of the cross, through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you the truth. And for 64 years plus, I have been going up and down America in all 50 of our states and in 64 foreign countries. And with a worldwide radio program today, I tell them the only way to heaven is by the way of the cross. And through that shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will never call upon him and you will never seek his salvation until you get the fear of God before your eyes. So this is a pathetic crowd. They listen to these false prophets. They listen to these false preachers. They do not know and they are not aware of God's wrath. They are not aware of God's fury. They are not aware of God's anger. They are not aware of God's judgment. They are not aware of hell. And they are not aware of the lake of fire. No fear of God before their eyes. Not only are they a pathetic crowd, but they are a possessive crowd. They say... I am free to do as I please. And I want to tell you, J. Harold Smith, you're not going to tell me how to run my life, how to live my life. You're not going to tell me what to do and what not to do. I'm not trying to tell you what to do and what to not to do. I'm just telling you what God says. I'm only a voice. I'm only a voice. But it's the God, the God that you've got to face at the judgment. Not me, but the God that you've got to face at the judgment. And unless you repent of your sins and turn from your wicked ways, all of the liberty that you claim now will be turned into bondage. Yes, they, you can pass up the church on Sunday morning. You can make a trip to the golf course. You can go on that trip uh, uh, to the lake. You can make, my friends, that trip to the cool mountains in the summer and that warm climate in Florida during the winter and ignore God and use your money, brother, I tell you, for the selfish things of this life. But you're going to pay. You're going to pay with your soul. And what a price to pay. No fear of God before their eyes. And then not only are they a pathetic, and not only are they a possessive crowd, but they are a passive crowd. You say, preacher, what in the world do you mean by this? They pass up their opportunity. They pass up their last opportunity to get saved. They never realize it. But it comes and goes without them ever knowing that that's the last chance, the last opportunity that they'll ever come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. A few months ago, I was in a revival meeting in North Carolina. And I was preaching God's three deadlines. I was about halfway through the sermon when I saw a man stand up next to the back row and next to the aisle that led out the front door of the church. I saw him when he grabbed his handkerchief and a great gush of blood came out of his mouth. And that man, he, his daughter grabbed him. And one of the ushers that was standing there assisted him. And they got him through the foyer and out on the steps of the church. 
And he died there on the steps of the church before 911 could respond and get there with an ambulance. I'm going to tell you, this may be the last sermon you will ever hear. This may be the last time I could ever speak to you. I could be in eternity before the next telecast. And you could be in eternity before you take your shoes off tonight. Or before you, this morning, get undressed. What a sad hour that it be for you to die with no fear of God before your eyes. So it's a passive crowd. They say, I'll just take one more opportunity. I'll pass up these God-believing people. I'll pass up these God-believing churches, and I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to have my own way. And the Bible declares that since there is no fear of God before their eyes, their doom is certain. Their destiny is hell. And their desire to come to God and be, uh, is consumed in the fact that there is no fear of God before their eyes. Do you agree with me that this is a sad situation? Will you agree with me tonight that, that this is a terrible hour in which we live? Will you agree with me at this very second that the trouble with us, the major sin, is no fear of God before our eyes? Let me tell you. If the fear of God was before your eyes, you'd never buy another one of these ungodly magazines. If the fear of God was before your eyes, you'd never go to another X-rated movie. If the fear of God was before your eyes, you'd go to your refrigerator and empty that refrigerator of that six-pack. I tell you, if the fear of God was before your eyes, you'd lay down that package of cigarette or that dip of snuff. And you would never again do that that's destroying your body. If the fear of God was before your eyes, do you agree with me that it's a tragedy of tragedies, a father and a mother with sweet little children, and yet I tell you they will not have and will not have a family altar. They will not ask the blessing before the end, for the, for the end of the meal. Why? Because there is absolutely no fear of God before their eyes. I wonder, I just wonder, if you really know down deep in your heart that God is out of your life. He isn't under your roof. What a sad tragedy. And when I stop to think about it, and I realize that if you would just call upon the Lord and say, God, I'm a sinner. This preacher is telling me the truth. This is an old man. You see, I was born June 14, 1910. So it doesn't take a good mathematician to figure out how old I am. Why am I on this telecast? Why do I come to you with these urgent messages? It's because I know that soon my opportunity in life will be over and I'll have no more time to ask you to consider Jesus right now. Will you bow your head with me and ask God to forgive you? He'll do it. If you'll ask him, our Father, I humbly bow here asking you to take this little telecast, this program, and speak to some heart. Lord, I know that out there there are many, many souls that have heard me tonight that are lost. Lord, they don't want to go to hell, but somehow or another the devil has just blinded them and kept them from ever letting the fear of God come into their heart. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that this will be the night when their eyes will be opened and they will see the Almighty God. Yes, a God of love, a God that stretches out His arms all day long to a sinner, but Lord, a God that is full of wrath every day toward the sinner. Help them to repent. Help them to turn to Christ. And we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed the sermon that we've heard today on the fear of God, and I hope it's touched your life and enriched your relationship with the Lord. You know, the Radio Bible Hour is one of the oldest gospel ministries in the country, founded in 1935 by the man you just heard preach that sermon. If you would like to know more about this work, go to the web address on your screen. This is Don Smith, and again, I want to thank you for watching this video today, and may the Lord bless you in every area of your life.